Today's dreamer is a woman. She's 44 years old. She's a teacher, and she entitled her dream in another time. And here's the dream. I'm a passenger in a moving car. The driver notices that we are going through a bad area and begins to close the car windows with a second layer of window, a dark sort of armor that comes standard in these future cars. She is closing the windows when I realize it was too late to close mine. A young boy comes through the still open gap in my window. He lands on my lap and he has a metallic stick that's like a toothbrush, but instead of bristles, it has spikes. This is part of a scam that is known in this future environment. These bristles will be used to poke me, to infect me with something horrible. If I am so scared that I open the door to eject this child, there are people waiting outside to attack our vehicle and to hurt us all in ways that could be even worse. Even in the dream, I begin to ponder what infection in my past led me to this sad life where I'm about to be infected. The past and future are jumbled. If I had made better choices, would I have had a better life? Would I have been a better person? I see all of my missed opportunities, and it's as if I accept that my life was already infected before I face whatever infection will come of these bristles. But I won't open the car door. So for context, the dreamer says, I've been reflecting a lot on my life lately, which I do in the dream as well. And she says the main feelings in the dream were, this felt scary, and I was sort of bracing myself to accept all of that within the dream. And she adds, I'm not in a recognizable time or place, and I recognize no person in the dream. Okay. So what do we make of this complex dream? Mm-hmm. Well, uh... One of the things that came up for me when I was sitting with it um, was that there is an image of psychological defense in this dream. So there are these armor windows that come up when you're in a bad area. So it's the way that we shield ourselves from, we, you know, we have defenses against things, you know, in the outer world. We can shield ourselves against attack or shield ourselves against, you know, bad opinions of ourselves or become defensive with another person, but defenses also work in the inner world. So we might defend against, uh, for example, new information that the unconscious wants to bring to our attention that might upset our ego's equilibrium. And I, I think of these windows as being an example of that. And then there's a young boy that comes through the, the window, and I can't help but imagining that that's a positive thing. You know, children in dreams are usually positive. They usually carry the sense of, of mm -hmm. new life that's developing. And, uh, and, it, and I think it's positive that the dreamer is not going to eject the child and is willing to take whatever's going to come from this encounter. I find myself visualizing this toothbrush with spikes on it and, and wondering mm. if such an object even exists um, or something reminiscent of that that the psyche has, I don't know, seen at some time or has some kind of value. Well, there's the idea of injection. And, you know, what can be injected can be medicine or sometimes it can be poison. And sometimes those two things are one and the same, actually. Uh, you know, so, sometimes uh, something that's actually toxic in high doses is the thing that heals in a small enough dose, for example. And, and so an injection, you know, is also what a snake does when it bites us or a spider. So there's the notion that when we are injected with something, we are changed on an inner level and, uh, and we have to submit to it. And I think that this, this dreamer understands that she has to admit to it, she has to submit to it. And in a sense, it, it, it might in, involve a kind of death or, or suffering, but that that is the price of 
being changed. And, and she's not, fortunately, she's not um, too defended against what the psyche wants to bring to her attention. She can allow the new life in and allow it to change her. I have a, um, something I'd love to share. Okay. So <laughs> I knew that I was thinking about something. Now, it's certainly not a toothbrush, but I was trying to figure out what medical devices huh. might have spikes on them and how might that be relevant. And uh, because I have um, idiopathic neuropathy in my okay. feet, so okay. I'm familiar with these sensory pinwheels. Wow. They're very, very sharp. They, they could pierce the skin, but they're not Ooh. meant to. But they are intense. And so the neurologist will, will rake it over my foot and I will feel it, but I'll have no pain. And then it'll get right above what would be a sock level. And then all of a sudden I'm like, ow! Wow. <laughs> and um, it tests this line between um, ordinary and mm. reduced sensory levels. Mm. And if it was misused, of course, it really could really jab that into someone. But So I had this fantasy that um, while she would imagine the spikes could only be used to break her skin. There may be other reasons. And one of the things is, are you sensitive enough? Mm. Or where are you lacking um, adequate sensitivity? And where are you more sensitive? So it's a way of giving testing stimulus mm -hmm. response. And I don't know if that's exactly what the dream is, but it offers a, another lens because mm -hmm. the dream ego is often I don't know, as it is for all of us, it jumps to conclusions, it gets worried. Yeah. Right. But um, she's there wanting to put armor around, which means I am not going to feel anything. Hmm. And then this little sprite, so to speak, comes uh -huh. in with a little mm -hmm. neurologic pinwheel saying, ah, well, let's test how sensitive you are in various yeah. places in your body yeah. where your armor hasn't had a chance to lock you in. Uh, that's that's really interesting. Yeah, and I think our dream ego gets it at the end in uh, in a way um, where she says, you know, she's kind of doing a little life review. If I'd made better choices, you know, would I have had a better life? Would I have been a better person? I see all my missed opportunities, and it's as if I accept that my life was already infected, presumably by her missed opportunities and poor choices, before I face whatever infection will come of these bristles, and I won't open the car door. So there's, there, the dream ego is aware of the telos of the dream, of where is this going? Mm -hmm. And in the dream, she talks about past and future, and this is a future car and so on. So there's something in the dream that is aware that this is going somewhere. There is something purposeful about it. And what if she was already infected? Mm. Uh, and the difference between uh, you know, something curative and a poison is often in the dosage. S snake venom is used medicinally when it's diluted. I would also love to read the dream again, but just replace the word infect with affect. Cause, cause, <laughs> Try it. Go, yeah. go for it. I'm a passenger in a moving car. The driver notices that we're going through a bad area and begins to close the car windows with a second layer of window, a dark sort of armor that comes standard in these future cars. She's closing the windows when I realize it's too late to close mine. A young boy comes in. Through the still open gap in my window, he lands on my lap and has a metallic stick. It's like a toothbrush, but instead of bristles, it has these spikes. This is part of a scam that's known in the future environment. Those bristles will be used to poke me, to affect me in some horrible way. Huh. If I am so scared that I open the door to eject the child, there are people 
waiting outside to attack the vehicle and hurt us in ways that could be worse. Even in the dream, I began to ponder what affect in my past has led me to this sad life where I'm about to be affected. <laughs> the past and future are jumbled. If I'd made better choices, would I have had a better life, been a better person, my missed opportunities? It's as if I accept that my life was already affected before right. I face whether affectation will come of these bristles, but I won't open the car door. And yeah. often we are afraid that we will be infected with a, with a kind of feeling that we is going on in the unconscious mind. I don't want to feel certain things, so I put my armor up. And mm -hmm. then we begin to treat a feeling, an uncomfortable feeling, as if it's an, a poison or an infection. But actually, it could just be psychological pain of some kind that we really hope to wall off. Mm -hmm. And we know it has something to do with being bad. We're going through the bad area and the barriers come up. So I wonder whether or not she's got much access to her badness mm -hmm. or knowledge of it at the very least. You know, there's something about um, being worried about being infected and she's already been infected that says to me that, you know, it, it's sort of our fate to be infected in, sen in a sense by life or to be affected, affected by life. Affected, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's a sense like, oh, it's already happened and it's happening again. And it's the, it's the inescapability of our fate. And what I, what still feels positive to me is that, you know, the streamer's not thrilled about accepting it but she's accepting it this is mm -hmm. you know it, it, what she knows is that if she rejects this fate it's going to come out worse for her she she really gets that and uh so she's yeah. she's prepared to take what is you know what is her destiny in, in essence you know it's also a story about getting inoculations mm -hmm. and being vaccinated so I have been vaccinated, which is an infection, previously. Mm -hmm. And so the boy comes in, and he's going to vaccinate her again. But it's not safe to open the door and be exposed to all the other infections or affectations out there. I actually need to get my vaccination first. Mm -hmm. And then once I build up some immunity, then I might be able to open the door and withstand the badness, whatever that is, out there. And I think of dreams as often being like vaccinations. Yeah. They give us mm -hmm. tiny little doses of something. That's great. And our psychological immune system kind of gets a little more muscular. That's, I really like that, Joseph. That's really cool. Mm hmm.